So this right here is very exciting. This is a 2006 5.7 liter Hemi out of a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Sounds polar valve cover. And looks pretty clean. There we go. And here is the Terminator X from Holly. So on top of being able to pick up the engine from the Challenger, solved a really large piece of the puzzle with the transmission. And what this is, is an A833 transmission. So one of the biggest things that's a problem with the classic car market is the fact that a lot of these vehicles either didn't have air conditioning when they left the factory, or it really just doesn't work. And that's one of the hardest things to find is working air conditioning, especially living around where I do. You really need it in the summer months. That's why Vintage Air is gonna help us out. Check out this beauty. This is their uh, AC kit for a 70 to 74 Challenger or Cuda with non-AC from the factory, being because the, fact, the factory firewalls were different depending on if you had air or not, and as well as the dash and a couple other components. So this is going to bolt into a non-air conditioning car and have everything you need for it. So before we really deep dive into what we have here in this air box, let's go ahead and take out our old one so we can make room for our new one. A few videos back, we actually took the dash and the windshield out of the Challenger, but I haven't put it back in because we're waiting on the vintage air to come in. So what you see here is the factory heat only air box. So we're gonna take it out, it shouldn't be too hard to do. We've got most of our connections and wires already undone. Should be just a few bolts and then take it right out. That's not hard to remove all this. There's three bolts right here. We'll just knock those out real quick on the, uh, the blower motor for the heater box and then everything else should be fairly simple to pop right out. So these are the three main bolts you gotta remove. So let's pop these out. On these cars they actually put a, a hook that'll hook on the inside right here to keep the uh, air box from falling so that's one thing that'll hold you back so make sure you remove it on this challenger right here there's a bolt here that's the hook that's actually hanging in there so we're going to back that bolt off and i'll show it to you whenever i get it out There's that little tricky hook I was telling you about. So what makes this vintage air kit so cool is the fact that it's way more compact than what the factory had to offer. And what you're seeing in the rear is what we took out just now. It is only for heat. It is heat only. The air box with heat is even bigger than that. So you'll notice a couple different things on the uh, that are kind of stick out to you. One is that there are no cables. The switch is all electric. There's no cables that you have to worry about. It's all all by wire. It's all very simple. So all these cables that you see routed up in here, if you have frozen cables, you don't have to reuse those. That's good. Another thing is the fresh air duct. That's gone. They actually give you a cap with the kit, but we're going to cap that off on the firewall. We don't need that anymore. So you can see it's just all self-contained. We've got all sorts of new duct work. We've got new vents, everything to make it work. There's a few things that we have to do before that vintage air can go in though. One of those things being is that we do have to change out these ducts right here for the defroster. So I mentioned about this fresh air door right here, and vintage air actually caps this off. So here is the cap that we'll be using. And basically all it does is the hole that's in the firewall itself will just mount directly up this way. You just screw it in, simple as it gets. Now the instructions are telling me to take out these two bolts right here, and then add this mounting bracket in its place. Pretty simple. 
bolts were already in there. And we'll tighten these two up. We're good to go. So this bracket actually will screw to the inside of the cowl, while this one back here has two more brackets that we will mount, and this is actually going to work for the firewall itself. So we've got two brackets, and all the screws like you just saw, and all they do is screw right in. Then we need to leave all of this just a little loose, that way we can move stuff around when we need to, but once we actually get our mounting holes drilled, we can tighten all this stuff up, and it says to actually, like where it actually mounts to the firewall, you want to tighten those first. So we'll get all the brackets in place and make sure everything looks good, all that looks nice, and then like I said, this will mount to the firewall from the inside, and then this will mount to the inner structure of the cowl under the dash of the car. And now it is time for us to install the hard lines for the heater and the AC system. One thing you'll notice is that I've already installed these O-rings, put a little oil on them, make sure that they're good and lubricated. So we'll go ahead and do this. This is the uh, liquid side of the AC system. Screw that in. I'm not going to tighten up any of these until it's all installed. Now we've got our heater hoses. One going here. One going right here and now we will install the suction side of the AC system when it's all said and done they all should sit about square with each other so you can see it makes like a a four a one two three four they're all kind of right up on top of each other but when it's all tightened up and squared away it should look just about like that. We actually have a plug for the old blower motor that these are supposed to go through so we may leave these loose until it actually goes through that to make sure that it, it all lines up properly but all in all it's not that hard to do. We have all of our o-rings in place and now the box itself is actually ready to install. So the last thing you want to do here is use this supplied press tape and cover up the AC fittings where you've tightened everything up. Now they've only done the AC fittings in the pictures so that's what I'm going to do as well. So the box is in and it really was not that hard to do. The most tedious part was making sure that you drill the holes in the right place. But other than that it really wasn't that bad. It's honestly easier to put in versus the original box. There's two screws on the back side. You can see them right there. And all it is is you drill the holes according to the measurements that they give you in the paperwork. And then you will do the same thing on the firewall. There are two holes that you have to drill. You can see there's one hole, second hole. If you follow the measurements to a T, it's not hard at all. And then whenever you get everything in place, it comes with this nice little uh, cap here that plugs up the hole where the blower motor sat before and then you run your hoses up through those, the hard lines, and where the old heater lines came through from the old heater core, you've got black plugs on the left side there. So now, everything is installed. The only thing we have to do is wire it up and then hook it up to the engine. Pretty much the hard part is just about done. That was the most tedious part for me, in my opinion. And now that it's in the car, we can put the dash in. We run some of those duct works that we have to worry about, and get everything in place that we need to, but other than that, it really was not that bad. Just in case you were curious about what the instructions look like for drilling those holes, you can see there's the uh, firewall, that's the outside of the firewall, and then that's the inner side of the dash. And honestly, it's, it's four holes that you gotta drill, they give you the exact specifications, and if you did it right, it'll line right up. I didn't have any issues making it all work, so it was really simple to make happen. So the air box is not the only thing that comes with the vintage air kit. What else you have here, you've got all sorts of things like your, this is your duct work, this is all the hoses that you get. Uh, it's got our new, this is our new switch panel. This is like pretty cool, it actually fits in the factory location. Uh, you've got, this is like for a non-air car because my Challenger did not have air from the factory. So it does not have the holes cut out for the vents in the dash. Now, so this what, what this will do, they supply this for you and this will actually mount under the dash and then with that you get some of these vents so you pop those in place and then you've got vents to you know adjust which way you want it blowing and everything and then you've got your 
wiring harness here. You've got, you know, basically all the stuff that you could think of to have to make this work. And then behind me, in another box, I've got our high pressure hoses to make everything fit. And they, they come extra long so you can make them basically fit any engine you want. So being that I have a Vibe 7 Hemi that we're putting this in, we can make these fit. And then here are all the hard lines that we'll need running to our condenser and everything. And that's also in the box behind me. Don't want to take it out because it's in like some really protective packaging. So I'm going to keep that safe as long as possible. That's what's really cool about the Vintage Air kit is that it truly does have everything you need to make all this work. It'll fit in a factory location and basically bolt right in. And the cool thing about it is it gets rid of all those cables, all the those old harnesses, all those uh, those trap doors that you see. It's all infinite. I mean, it, it'll adjust the, the speed of the, the fan, however much you want it or how little you want it. It's all adjustable by wire. You, you run the switch, you don't have to worry about a cable freezing up on you after time. It all is, it's all infinitely adjustable is what they, what they say. And it's pretty neat. So, uh, you know, you can do an infinite mix of temperature. You can, uh, you know, all the way cold to all the way hot, but it'll be able to adjust that accordingly to whatever you want it to be. And I think that's a really awesome, it, it basically, it, it modernizes the car. And that's, that's really what we want to do is modernize the car. So all those old tubes, all those old hoses, all those old belts and everything, all the old hard lines that you might have had to deal with, the, the big bulky compressor, that's all gone. All this is simplified. It runs on modern refrigerant, 134 refrigerant, so you don't have to worry about trying to find R12 on your old vehicle or converting it if you have to. So you've got everything you need to make this work. I really like what I see. I think this is an awesome kit. We're going to finish up the rest of it later because the engine is not in the car just yet. So we've got to figure out where all our hoses and, and everything need to mount. Before we put the dash in, let's go ahead and run these defroster vents. Make it a little easier on ourselves. So they give you this extra length of hose. We'll just go ahead and cut it to length for both sides. Give us a little extra on this one. Make sure it'll slip over the these little tangs that it has. There's one. Now we can do two. The passenger, we get the passenger side in. There you go. Passenger and driver's side defroster ducts are done. Just kidding, I cut that passenger side a little bit shorter. I didn't like the way it looked looks really clean now. In this box, Classic Industries gave us a new dash pad. Brand new for the Challenger. Once again, coming through, as always, Classic Industries. That's nice. I've never actually had a new dash pad. I've only used pad covers. And they work, but if you do it wrong, it doesn't work right. Now I'll tell you what, that looks incredible. Let's turn it around so you can look at that. That's gonna be beautiful in the Challenger. Wow. It looks, I mean, perfect, literally perfect. So what we need to do is we've got a couple things we need to trade over. Classic provided a Challenger emblem right here. So we'll get that put in the, the car. We'll do that before we drop it in. And then back here, the VIN plate has to be transferred over. So we'll take that off the old dash and rivet it in. Uh, forgot to order a speaker grill. I broke the old one, stupid me. And it was brittle anyway, so it was bound to happen. So I'll have to get a new speaker grill. And don't know if I'll put a speaker here, would like to, but Maybe, we'll see. But anyway, I'm excited to see how this pad looks against our, our painted dash, because we, uh, like an eternity ago, we painted that, that dash frame, and it's been sitting in the floor over here for no telling how long, and I've been just dying, dying to put this dash pad on. 
And right there is the big difference. You can see this is our old dash pad. You can see all the cracks, the scrapes, all the, the foam missing. This is the original pad that was in the car when it left the factory. And here is our new one from Classic Industries. And it's just amazing to see how big of a difference just a dash pad can make. And it's, it's crazy. I mean, there's really nothing you can do for this old dash pad. And you can put a cap on them. Classic Industries does sell caps, but if you got the money, got the budget, I would not hesitate to go with a full dash pad as nice as that looks. And when you install it, you know that you got the peace of mind that, hey, this dash pad is brand new. So it'll last hopefully another 40, 50 years at that. But I love the way that that looks. It definitely brings back all that really deep black tone to the color of it, and it looks great. So we have to transfer the VIN plate over to the new dash pad. What we need to do is remove this rivet here and that rivet there. All we got to do is draw it out. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll fix this. This is an eighth. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> this is an eighth inch drill bit. Don't touch hot metal. Gosh, I'm an idiot. Hello. Thank you. Be installed. Now for our Classic Industries Challenger Dash Emblem to go in. Added just a smidge of I'm not playing around sauce to the back. Should just press in. So I'm going to knock everything over. There's three little prongs that have to go through. Nice. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, put that dash pad on that dash frame. And the dash pad is on the frame. That looks awesome. Got all our bolts in. I'll have to clean up the pad once it's in there, but otherwise, looks awesome. I really cannot believe that this car is finally going to get a new dash pad. I've been waiting for forever, it feels like, to put this thing back in there. That paint really did stand up nicely. Uh, we did paint that a few uh, months ago, but it still held up very nice in storage, really cured. You know, we did primer, paint, and then clear on it, so everything looks really nice. You get your side first. And the dash pad is finally in the car. After months of waiting for this thing to go back in, I can finally say it's in for good. Cannot believe how good it turned out. And like I mentioned, still got to put that speaker grill in, but that's not a big deal and really won't take much effort. And you can see that those vintage air vents really lined up nicely and look clean, tucked away under the dash. So no worries there. It all fit up just like the factory stuff. So I'm very surprised our... Uh, tag right there for the challenger the nameplate looks really pretty really shiny and nice and you can see our vintage air box is all tucked away nicely sits in behind the dash isn't in the way of anything and i'm going to leave all of the doors and everything like that off of the car for right now including the gauge cluster 
on the driver's side. We're going to leave all that out until the car is wired and as time permits and as time goes on we will add stuff slowly but surely but it does look awesome sitting in there. We'll uh, have everything we need for the vintage air to wire up. It's all in there like I showed you. We just got to keep pushing forward and keep making progress on this thing and we'll keep making progress. We just got to make it happen. We got to make it happen so that looks amazing to see that finally in the car after staring at it for months. I'm just so happy, so happy to see that thing back in there. And a couple things that I want to do, I've already painted the lid. You saw me paint that in a few videos back, the glove box lid. I've got a new glove box liner. I've got the ashtray all painted up nice and waiting on gauge clusters and steering column. I've got the original one with like a tilt. We'll see what happens. Don't know yet, but we've got the harness ready to go. We've got painless on board. We've got Holly on board and all the vintage air harnesses in the box like I showed you so we're gonna keep pushing and just make it happen so if the whole dash situation didn't excite you enough let's just show you a little sneak peek of what's to come in the next video check that out now, if that doesn't excite you I have no idea what will and that's just basically the cherry on top this box is full of four-speed parts. It's got everything we need to make that transmission work in the Challenger. The box under it is just as full of four-speed parts. So honestly, you guys need to stick around and see what's going to happen because this right here is like the holy grail. This is what we've been waiting for. This is like what I live for is a pistol grip four-speed shifter. This is like the epitome of shifter handles. It does not get any better than this. I can guarantee that. It just works it's it just does that's just all it is it's everything is perfect i cannot wait cannot wait for you guys to see this so stick around if you are excited about pistol grip four speeds let me know in the comments so today was awesome spent about 12 hours out here not gonna lie all get all this stuff in one day it seems like it's pretty easy to do but man it just it's so tedious to get a lot of this stuff done but I'm so happy it is. We got the vintage air air box situated in there. We've got a lot of stuff ready. We've got the foundation laid to have air conditioning in the Challenger. And that's awesome. I'm so excited about that. I haven't had a vehicle that's old that has air conditioning in it, to be honest with you. I've never had that before. So I can't wait. And the dash in the car, seeing that inside there is like the biggest motivator for me because I loved having that finally in there. I've been tripping over that thing and walking around it for so long that to finally see it in the car is just a, it's a total game changer for me and it's only going to be even better after that it's just going to keep going and going i'm so excited like i said we're going to keep making stuff happen we're going to make this thing run and drive and i cannot wait to see it and i hope you guys share the same enthusiasm as i do because i know that this has been a long time coming but i promise you that we're going to get there the light is at the end of the tunnel i can see it i can definitely see it so i hope you can too Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave a comment. Order your t-shirts and your stickers. Submit your project to the Facebook group. And uh, again, I just really appreciate everything you guys have done for me. And I hope you continue to stick around and keep watching the Challenger Project. So thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.